This is Daniel in so many words. Hey there fellow Pokemon trainers, my name is Daniel and in so many words, there are some Pokemon out there that I just don't like. I swear, one of the most requested things that I do on this channel is always some kind of top 10 Pokemon ranking list, you know, top 10 best, top 10 worst, etc. I can tell you right off the bat though that I'll probably never do a top 10 best list, at least not on this channel, because I try to do things for the sake of comedy around here and there's not much comedically I can pull from me just gushing on and on about how much I love Absol and Hydreigon for 20 minutes. However, I think I can do just fine with a list of Pokemon that I don't like, so today, I'm gonna give you my top 5 least favorite Pokemon of all time. Warning, the following list contains 5 Pokemon that you may or may not like. These Pokemon are not set in stone as the worst of the worst, but rather, the 5 Pokemon that some snarky blue-haired YouTuber likes the least. This list is based on nonsensical and probably hypocritical criteria, such as design choices, usefulness in the games, personal preferences, etc. In other words, this video will be filled with the greatest shitstorm fuel known to the internet, opinions. Your discretion is advised. <laughs> Number 5, Sunkern. You know, for years and years now, Magikarp has been the butt of a lot of people's jokes for supposedly being so useless, and considering it doesn't even learn the most basic of attacks until level 15, and up until that point all it does is splash around, it's easy to see why. Even the Pokedex is quick to bury Magikarp with its constant entries about how pathetic and weak it is. But technically, judging by base stats, Magikarp is not the weakest and most pathetic Pokemon in the world. Oh, no, 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 no. That dubious honor belongs to Sunkern. Sunkern's base stats are are actually lower than that of Magikarp, and if we look at both Pokemon's full evolutionary lines, what happens to Sunkern? It becomes Sunflora, whose base stats and move pool honestly aren't that much better. And as for Magikarp, well, I guess, you know, nothing special really happens there when it evolves, except, you know, unless you want to count the arbitrary fact that it becomes a fucking sea dragon, and its base stats take a huge jump when it evolves, and its move pool becomes so much more useful. Type advantages be damned. I think if a Gyarados took one look at a Sunflora, it would legitimately try to eat it. Number four. Unknown. I personally dislike Unknown for kind of the same reason I dislike Shadot. It's basically just a gimmick Pokemon. It has some unique features, but they're not really that significant, and overall, it's really not that useful. The big thing with Unknown is that it has 28 different forms, one for each letter of the alphabet, and then two punctuation marks. And it also was the first time that a lot of us players saw the move Hidden Power being used by Unknown, so honestly, a lot of us probably thought it was gonna be some awesome Pokemon. But the appeal ends right there, because catching all of its different forms doesn't really achieve or unlock anything, its base stats are horrible, and Hidden Power is the only move it ever learns. That's it! It doesn't learn anything by TM, nothing by breeding, nothing by tutoring, it can only ever learn Hidden Power, and Hidden Power really isn't that special of a move. Even though Hidden Power is Unknown's signature move, it's not actually exclusive to Unknown in any way. In fact, any Pokemon that is capable of learning TM moves can learn Hidden Power, and and its base power and type changes based on the Pokemon's individual values or IVs. Which sounds cool, except that most casual players aren't gonna bother going around trying to find a Pokemon with good IVs for a decent hidden power on top of trying to get one with a good nature and a good ability. Ultimately, the only appeal that Unknown really has for me would be spelling out dirty messages using unknown letters and then giving the messages to people who wouldn't know how to translate it. Number three. Deli Bird. For me, Deli Bird kind of falls under the same umbrella as Unknown does. It's a gimmicky Pokemon with bad stats and a bad move pool, even though technically Deli Bird can learn more moves than Unknown can, and its signature move is a joke. The one move that Deli Bird learns naturally, Presence, has four possible outcomes, three of which are different damage outputs, but one of those is actually a 20% chance of healing your opponent's Pokemon. And yes, unlike Unknown, Deli Bird can learn other moves via TM, tutoring, and breeding, but there's just not that many to choose from, and Deli Bird just doesn't have the stats to take advantage of any of them. And since Deli Bird is supposed to be the Pokemon equivalent of Santa Claus, maybe for Christmas this year, he could bring me the gift of a better ice type. Number two, Dunsparce. Dunsparce, in theory, should be pretty cool. It's a big land snake thing, it's based off a pretty cool mythological creature called the Suchinoko, and in the games it's pretty rare, so in theory, it should be a pretty awesome Pokemon. 
but it's just not, man. Outside of the inspiration for its design, Dunsparce has pretty much zero appeal with me. It's a normal type Pokemon that doesn't have any evolved forms, has a shallow move pool at best, and its base stat total is 415. I know I gave a lot of shit to Sunflora earlier, but even that has better base stats. Hell, there are just so many better options out there for a normal type non-evolving Pokemon with better base stats and better move pools. With that being said, what reason does Dunsparce really have for being rare? What reason could there be? There is none. It's just rare for the sake of being rare, and that's one of the worst kinds of rarity. The best thing you can hope for with a Dunsparce is that you catch one with a Pokerus and use it to infect the rest of your team so they can increase their effort values. Oh, Dunsparce, you're based on a cool thing, but you're basically useless and your status as a rare Pokemon is a complete farce. There is no point to you. Number one, Farfetch'd. You knew this was coming, didn't you? Farfetch just irks me for so many reasons. It's another one of those Pokemon with a shallow move pool and bad stats, and its reason for being rare is even worse than Dunsparce's. You wanna know the sole reason why Farfetch is so rare? It's because humans have overhunted them for food. Yeah, Farfetch isn't rare because of some great power or some amazing fighting ability. Farfetch is rare in that it's nearly extinct because the only use humans have actually found for it is eating it. Couple that with the fact that its design is based on the already overdone Pokemon based on the real life bird choice, and the fact that so many other normal and flying types outclass it in basically every possible way. Farfetch'd! Far, Farfetch'd! Not to mention the fact that it constantly interrupts my videos! Farfetch'd! Farfetch'd is, without a doubt, my number one least favorite Pokemon of all time. Of course, considering this is a heavily biased personal list full of my own opinions and probably has a few double standards in there somewhere, you can take this all with a giant grain of salt. Now, if you guys have your own list of least favorite Pokemon, or if you disagree with anything I said in my list, go ahead and tell me about it in a comment or a video response down below. But anyway, folks, this has been a Tuesday vlog, and we'll meet again on Saturday. But until then, insert catchphrase here.